Welcome to this tutorial on how to create a data loading process. So let's see how this works. The first step is to find the read operator we want, so let's type read into the search field. We are presented with a whole list of read operators, but the one we want is the read Excel, which we can now drag into our process panel. To make sure the data is loaded in the way we want, we will select the Import Configuration Wizard to walk us through the process. We first select the file and then we can take a look at our data. Here you can change the sheet you want to pull the data from. We mocked up a sheet with data export header to show you how you can handle the skipping rows. To skip the first section I can simply set the cell range to start just at the first relevant row. In case you have a header row, you want to adjust this here as well so that the attributes or columns get named accordingly. In the final step of the import configuration wizard, we can now omit columns from being loaded by excluding them. We can change the names or we could change data type and role. In this customer data set, we will change the role for our churn column to become a special attribute, a label, and then we can click finish. Okay, where's the data now? We have just gone through the import wizard. How come we don't see it? Well, since it's a process, we need to hit the run process button. I ran it, but now we see an error message. It is telling us that a final connection is missing in order to view our results. Okay, let's connect the ports. Now let's run it again. Congratulations, you have just loaded in the data. The difference between importing and loading is rather important. This data loading process will load the data into your computer's memory into RAM. So you have the latest data to work with, but you always need to have the source file available. In case you move or delete it, then the data loading will fail. If you would want to prevent that, then you could add a copy into your repository by storing what we just loaded. So let's do that. But we should first take a moment to save the work we have done so far by saving the process. The formal way is to open the file menu, select save process and then select the destination folder and give it a name. However, let's cancel this here and use a quicker approach. If we go to our repository panel, we can right click on the folder where we want to store our process and select store process here. Now the only thing left is to give it a name. Let's say 01 import customer data. Great, you just saved your first process. To close the loop on loading the spreadsheet and storing it in the Rapid Metadata repository, we will add another operator to our process. It's not hard to guess that the operator to use is the store operator. This time, let's use what we call the global search to find the operator. There it is, highlight it, drag it over. Just let go and drop it on there, as it will then automatically connect the ports. The next step is, as always, to define our parameters for the operator. We will override our existing data file or, if you haven't followed along in the import data module, simply create a new one called customer data. When we now start our process by selecting the run process button, you can see the file was generated or if you already had generated it before, you will see the timestamp is updating. This concludes our introduction to loading data via process. However, before we end this tutorial, let's have a look at how we can export and import the process we just created. First, we need to highlight the process we want to export by selecting it in our process folder. Then we go to the file menu and select export process. Then we select the place in the folder or create one. Let's create one on our desktop and call it Rapid Miner Export Import. We only need to give our exported process a name. We'll call ours for the sake of demonstration Export Import. Before we proceed to the import, let's clean our process panel by creating a blank process. You can do that by selecting the button which looks like a blank sheet in the menu bar and then double click. Now to import our process, we obviously select Import Process from the file menu. Navigate to the folder, select our process with the ending .rmp and click open. If you really import an external process, this would be the moment to go through the operators and make sure parameters and especially references such as folder paths are set correctly. 
The process is reviewed, loaded and displayed but not stored anyway, so the import is not done yet. So as shown before, rightmost button on the target folder, select store process here and confirm. As we exported and imported our already existing process, we now have two versions of the same process, so we can do some housekeeping and learn this way how to delete processes or entire folders. Just do a right click on the item and select delete. In our case, the export import process. Before we end this topic and the tutorial, we have an important information to keep in mind. When you delete an entire repository, then you are just deleting the link to it, but not the files and the folder it contains. If you want to delete these, then you need to go to your file system and delete it there manually. Alright, this concludes our tutorial. Thank you very much for watching.